Okay, in section two here today, we are going to talk about mental math. Now, mental math, we did that already with addition. We're going to, going to do, now do it with some multiplication. Uh, sometimes this is, is scary to some students, but what I will say, there are patterns we can follow. When we follow these patterns, it becomes a little bit easier. All right, so let me show you a couple examples. We're going to look at this problem right here. It's going to be 50 times 20. You may say, well, I, I don't know my 50 or my 20 times tables. That's okay, because you know your fives and your twos. When numbers end in zero, what you can do is you can take the first digit, the five and the two, and multiply them. Now we know five times two is 10. And then we look back and we say, how many extra zeros are there? We have two, we have one in 50 and one in 20. We add those to the end. So 10 with two zeros at the end is 1,000. You just solve that problem in your head. Now, you must continue to use the properties that we used. For example, when you take a problem that is 25 times 4 times 17. Okay, you say, oh man, there's that 17 there. That's tough. It is. But using the associative property, we can group them. Now, we look for numbers that work well together, what we call compatible numbers. And immediately, that 25 and 4 should jump out. Why? Because there are four quarters in a dollar. So we know 25 times 4 is 100. Then we can use what I just, I just went over before, and we can take that 100 times 17. Another property. We're going to take that 1 times 17, and we know because the identity property of multiplication, that's going to give us 17. All right, and then the last thing we need to do is add those two zeros to the end from the 100. So the uh, 17 with two zeros on the end is 1,700. So using the a combination of the associative property and the identity property, you can solve large problems like this in your head. To further illustrate the point I just went over, let's look at this tree, this diagram, and you're gonna start to see the pattern. We're gonna start off with three times seven equals 21. That is our base, but now we can just extend that. So let's do um, three times 70. Okay, three times 70, we take the three times seven, again, 21, add a zero to 210. We take that three times 700. Okay, again, three times seven is 21, add two zeros. This time it's 2,100. And as the pattern goes, you just keep adding zeros to the end. So always break up your, your digits, your non-zero digits, and multiply them first, and then go back and add the zeros. It will make doing this mental math very easy. Does every problem lend itself this way? No, but if you do see this, this is a good way to save time and be very accurate at the same time. Now it's your turn to try a couple problems. All right, remember to use the properties that we talked in 3.1. Use the commutative property if possible, but really focus in on that associative property. Try to group numbers together and the identity and zero property. If you see them, make sure you're using them. It will help you out greatly.